Now, the U.S. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has called for new elections in Israel, saying the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is a major obstacle to peace and risked making Israel a pariah. Senator Schumer said it was a grave mistake for Israel to reject a two-state solution. The fourth major obstacle to peace is Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who has all too frequently bowed to the demands of extremists like ministers Smotrich and Ben Gavir and the settlers in the West Bank. Now this comes after the Israeli military said it plans to move nearly one and a half million displaced Palestinians in Rafah to what it described as humanitarian islands in the middle of the Gaza Strip. Aid agencies have insisted that safely moving such a large number of people in a war zone would be almost impossible and an assault on Rafah could prove disastrous. Merlin Thomas from Verify has been looking at where Israel might try to move the people from Rafah. The Israeli army has said it plans to move Palestinians out of the city of Rafah in southern Gaza to what it describes as humanitarian islands. It comes ahead of a planned military offensive in Rafah. And Rafah is at the southern border with Egypt. Over a million displaced Palestinians are currently sheltering there after being forced to leave their homes because of the Israeli offensive elsewhere. And this is the satellite image from before in December. Look at this road and this area. And this is one from late February. And you can see just how many people are there. Tents are everywhere, even on roads. So where will people go from Rafah? We don't know. The Israeli statement doesn't specify exactly where, but there are already questions of where in the rest of Gaza has the infrastructure and buildings still intact to shelter people coming from Rafah. Take a look at this map. This is the Gaza Strip. And this is a map of all of the areas that have been damaged. That's the red patches that you can see. Those are areas that have been damaged or destroyed since the beginning of the war. After all, the people who came to Rafah came because they were fleeing much more intense bombing in the rest of Gaza. Uh, one of the most heavily affected areas is Khan Yunus. It's a city in southern Gaza, some seven kilometers north of Rafah. This is a satellite image from December. And this is from February. And you can see how some of those neighborhoods have been completely flattened there. And again, Deir al balah is in central Gaza. Again, this is from October. And this is from March. And you can see just how extensive that damage is. And getting anywhere in Gaza is a huge challenge. There's only one main road from the south to the north that's fully operational right now, and that's being used to transport aid. It's the coastal road here, this orange one, called Al Rashid Road. So in order to move over a million people out of Rafah, safe routes will likely have to be created. Israeli military spokesperson Daniel Hagari has said this planned evacuation of Palestinians to so-called humanitarian islands would be carried out in coordination with international actors. But last night, US Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said he's not seen any details of an evacuation plan. And any evacuation of over a million people will take time. But the plans for how exactly that will happen is unclear. That was Merlin Thomas from uh, BBC Verify. And just uh, backing up what she's saying, we just had a statement from the White House uh, saying that they cannot confirm whether Israel has plans to relocate people out of Rafa. Uh, let's speak to Al Ben-Ari, senior fellow at the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security. Hello to you. Thank you for joining us here on BBC News. Um, so plans, although this has been announced, this plan for humanitarian islands moving, what, more than a million people potentially from, uh, from Rafa, how logistically uh, could that happen in effectively a war zone? First of all, good, good afternoon or good evening. Uh, I would say it's a huge logistical undertaking. We are talking about at least two major areas. One would be pushing the, uh, the civilians in the Rafa area towards the, uh, the coast and up north, a bit to the north, towards the southern part of central Gaza, which is still an open area. That's one possibility for a major uh, effort. The other is that we've been having consistent, um, I would say, reporting about Egypt, creating a humanitarian area just on the border of Rafah in the Egyptian area. 
So this would be these would be two major areas. Now, having said that, one must realize that the, the, the very acts of establishing an infrastructure, which includes tents, uh, sewage, running water, some kind of public facilities for healthcare, for government, and so on, is something that will take months mm. to carry out. Well, that's, uh, inter and, that's interesting that you bring up the, the matter of timing, because as you say, with that amount of people and those amount of logistics, that will take time. That's right. And, uh, and obviously, certainly in the Gaza area, the idea of wanting to be there and control all the uh, establishment of the infrastructure. Now, if I may, another little comment. This is, <clears throat> as you said before, there are no actual plans that have been uh, published or disseminated to the general public. But it does fit what have been, we, we in Israel have been told by the IDF that the whole campaign will take months to take to complete. People are talking about 2025, perhaps 2026. So this effort, it will take a long while, but it does fit with the overall idea of the IDF campaign in Gaza. And what do you make to the statement by the White House that we just uh, talked about there with um, the fact that they are saying they have no idea of the plans, that they are not aware of these plans? Um, it does rather seem that there has been more pressure from uh, the, the White House administration to try and find out what is going on, what Israel's plans are, but clearly um, Israel not sharing them. At, at this uh, stage, I, I agree completely with the idea that... Uh, uh, Bibi Net and Benjamin Netanyahu is completely beholden because of the structure of his coalition to the radicals uh, Smotrich and uh, Ben Gvir and, and others and so on. And uh, knowing Bibi, at least according to his track record, he's holding all the cards very close to his heart. And in a sense, based again on uh, precedents, uh, he will perhaps wait for even greater American pressure being put uh, on Israel and coming out with certain plans. We've seen this time and again during this campaign where the U.S. would say uh, more humanitarian aid, Bibi Netanyahu prevaricates, and finally, if you like, capitulates and so on. The very fact, uh, one must understand that the, in Israel, the IDF is quite a porous institution in Israel. And so we are getting various media reports about the responsibility of these humanitarian islands. Any concrete plans? I don't have any idea myself. Um, one, of, one of the objectives, clearly, of the IDF, or the main objectives, is to uh, get rid of any Hamas operatives. I just wonder, when you potentially are moving more than a million people from one area to another, how do you separate, how do you identify those Hamas operatives, um, how would they go about doing that logistically? This would be, uh, uh, this was, this, this is one of the things that may take time. So if the IDF creates various kinds of checkpoints, roadblocks, and so on, they will have to check each and every individual. Now the big, there are two big worries from the point of view of the IDF. With the Hamas operatives in, indeed seeping into these humanitarian islands, that's one, that is uh, uh, Hamas operatives. On the other hand, the IDF is very worried that the Hamas may potentially start to control these uh, humanitarian islands. Instead, for example, uh, dominating or uh, controlling uh, all the uh, access to, uh, to food, medicine, and so on, just, in, just as it is, has done and is doing in Gaza. One more point, which may interest uh, the international audience, is that we are hearing, I would say, the last month or so, various suggestions about creating a governmental or a military government, the same kind of government through which Israel uh, occupied and controlled the West Bank and Gaza before the withdrawal in 2005 mm. and before the uh, Oslo Accords. That is, in every one of these humanitarian islands, and perhaps in other parts of Gaza, you would have oh. a military uh, governor and a, an apparatus under him. We'll have to leave it there. It's really good to talk to you. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.